Uh, welcome back Warriors fans to One Take, the official podcast of the One New Zealand Warriors. An exciting week in the world of footy. Obviously that pre-season challenge she's now wrapped up. We've got round zero in Vegas this weekend so that will be a bit of chaos. Looking forward to having it back on our TV screens though. As always the One Take podcast is brought to you by the TAB, the home of rugby league punting here in New Zealand. Download the app or head along to their website www.tab.co.nz to see the odds, power plays, boosted options and promos and and as always, please gamble responsibly. But Monday morning, which means we have the great man in the building, warrior number 61, Monty Beetham. It's been a couple of weeks since we last caught up, mate. How you been? What's been going on? I've been good, man, because we're getting closer to what is uh, the NRL season and we're mm. getting closer to knowing what our team is going to be. And, you know, being uh, having witnessed what was at home uh, in the weekend just gone, um, you know, what's there not to be buoyant about, mate, and, and happy to smile about on a Monday morning, Benny? For sure. We both spent our Saturday Arvos at, at Go Media Stadium. And where else would you want to be, to be fair? The sun was out, where the gods turned it on, and the lads backed it up too. But the thing that stood out for me, like the amount of kit, the amount of supporters and the fans, off the back of a sold-out Christchurch, the buzz is crazy at the moment. You mentioned that buzz. I, I don't think I've seen, like, 30th season this year. I don't think I've mm. seen trials back-to-back or definitely uh, the accumulation of crowds uh, for one season in general that it's been this big. Christchurch, 14,000, I tip mm. my hat to you. Uh, and then at Go Media Stadium, sell out um, a, a beautiful evening, like you, you mentioned. And um, the, the buzzing around the place, even the kit down in Christchurch yeah. was unreal. And the support and the people out there loving it. And, you know, the Up The Waz uh, movement is, is definitely going strong, man. Heritage jersey sold out in what, under 20 minutes? Do you manage to cop one yourself? Absolutely. There we go. So I've got a couple in there, man. And yeah. there's still people out there who's trying to get out of my DMs. I can't help it. <laughs> it's too late. If you snooze, you lose. Yeah. Well, impressive on the field as well. 34-22 to 22 against the Dolphins and a pretty stacked Dolphins side too. They made some good acquisitions over the off-season with Flegler, Herbie, Avarillo, but this was kind of our first glimpse at seeing a lot of our big names back into the squad. What did you make of the performance? Of our big names yeah. in the squad? Our squad? Oh, I was really happy with the performance. Um, you know, I think um, being in there in the change room after the game, uh, talking a little bit about what we'd be thought, he mm. thought... Um, uh, that the boys know what to do uh, and how to do it in terms of getting the result but they need to individually uh, make sure that they turn up for the majority of the 80 minutes uh, in that right frame of mind and willing to do uh, what that formula takes to get the the number that you're looking for which mm. is which is the outcome um, and you know it was, it was a good feel afterwards the boys uh, were happy to have that hit out uh, no place like home they've enjoyed that a lot of them were out there signing autographs and they appreciate the crowd uh, but overall, man, you know, when you get 10 penalties against you, you don't get a single penalty. That's yeah. 10 sets. Uh, so that's adversity that you face straight away. We saw a bit of adversity the week before, uh, you know, playing with one man down uh, yeah. for a big portion of the game. So when you're looking at these trials and what you want to get out of the trials, you want to face a little bit of adversity and you want to come through on the other end. And that's what they've done in both times. Uh, and the great thing about it, most pleasing thing, um, and, I, and I feel sorry for our, our Dolphins man, mm. Tom Gilbert, mm. uh, there is no um, bad injuries, you know, for him back end of last year in his shoulder and now to have succumbed to an ACL potentially it's it's crazy man. I feel for him for sure and you touched on that penalty count like 10 nil to get the win with that going on is pretty crazy another stat that jumped out I think the Dolphins had 47 missed tackles compared to our 11 which is pretty elite from us like we'll touch on some standout performers soon but our attack it's looking pretty deadly, isn't it? Which which part of the field are you referring to? Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, normally a left edge over the years is where you like to go because that's mm. the side that you, you pass easily with and that's where your strike weapon is. But across the board, and I haven't said this for a very long time, there is strike everywhere uh, through the middle of the park on on either edge, even what comes off the bench. Um, so that's that's absolutely scary and that is why you've got a number of missed tackles because that, that, those missed tackles are 49-odd were shared across the board. Yes, we have one RT. Yes, who came up with nine himself mm. uh, on the left edge and then moved Crazy. a little bit closer to the action. Uh, but he hasn't missed a beat, and we'll talk about him later on. But just there is not one player there in terms of uh, our, our strike standout attacking forces 
uh, that I think, geez, that they haven't really stepped up to the mark. You know, and when we say this, mm. with the most respect, Adam Fanua, Blake, Torhu Harris, Sean Johnson, three of our most strike weapon players mm. last year and clutch players, probably a little bit quiet with their standards. Yeah, yeah. So that's frightening, man. Yeah, I think Adam was still like 180 run metres, but like you said... <laughs> and that's quiet, man. Yeah, well, like fans in the crowd probably don't notice it until you look at the stat sheet and you see how much work he got through. But you touched on Roger, so let's just get straight to him because I'm sure people want to hear your thoughts. Like, 196 run metres, 101 PCMs. His leg drive is just unreal. Nine tackle breaks, two uh, line breaks, three line break assists, a try, and about 15 defenders with broken ankles because that goosey into that left foot crazy how good is it to have him back and it just kind of shows there's levels to this right the elite guys they never lose it there, there, there is levels and you know hard work beats talent when talent won't work hard but when talent and X Factor works hard and is such a great student of the game like a Sonny Bill Williams mm. like a Sean Johnson like a RTS uh, it's, it didn't leave this to chance it was all in preparation I saw him two days out I think just before and he had his um, iPad there and his iPad had pages and pages of notes throughout the week which he condensed down into one page he had pictures he had diagrams uh, he had his bullet points there right now and then him and Sean were sitting together talking about this you know just jamming back and forth and this was a vibe because Sean was asking about his setup and he was all, all talking about how he'd be thinking into a match and I was just loving every minute of it uh, from a dinosaur point of view and, and a club ambassador going this is beautiful because you know over the years you haven't quite seen it and this is why uh, the ultimate players um, can have longevity and play so well Sean Johnson's year last year uh, in the twilight of his career mm. was outstanding because it's not by chance it's preparation if you fail to prepare prepare to fail and these guys prepare and geez they, they've been delivering man another go delivered on the weekend Wade Egan like I'd, I'd say it's a hot take, but it's probably not. I reckon he'll wear the New South Wales 9 jersey this year eh, and get a crack in origin. But the work he does around the ruck, like his ability to draw that marker and then ball play one of his players into that hole, he's second to none at that at the moment. My Kiwi select the hat on. I'm just counting down how many days it takes him to play. <laughs> oh, here. so you're going that way. I'm telling you what, Major McGuire there uh, mm-hmm. last year was asking about him. Yeah. Uh, you know, in part of the conversations last year, in terms of how long has he got till he's a resident, how mm. long has he got till he could potentially put on the black jumper? Well, rather that than you know, yeah, 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 yeah. information there. Okay, I'll take that back. I'd love to yeah, see yeah. him in the black jumper. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of other guys coming through. But look, he's mm. just, he is outstanding. If you go back, you watch the game again, you see what he does in and around dummy half. Uh, even the little subtle plays, like you see when he jumps out to put someone in behind the ruck, he'll pump first and he actually deliver his eyes in and he'll actually scoot across mm. which means that those guys latch on then he, he gives the offload uh, the Tane to a picky movement when he showed long little pump held it up and he dropped it short to Tane mm. coming at pace um, just the little variations around the ruck and of course the barnet try yeah. uh, when he jumped out left understanding that the markers will bite on him just played across because the art in doing that and the timing it takes um, it, 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 it's pretty impressive uh, you know, because obviously you've got to pass back against the grain mm. with your eyes on, on the market defender that you take left, and then you can't hit the, the player that's playing the ball as well. And then it's all got to be timed well with Mitch Barnett um, at full speed. So he's a wonderful player, man. Um, just what he can do. Uh, obviously, last year he had some problems with his head. Yeah. Hopefully, that's well behind him. Mm-hmm. A great defender. He's a big boy. I mean, yeah. I remember two years ago, the first time I saw him, the height that he has, he'd be at least 6'1. Uh, but a, a player that is just a, a real beating heart of this uh, this club inside right now. Younger brother now at the club as well. That, that's pretty cool to see, right? Oh, look, Talon's a great young man. Mm. Um, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. His mm. father's a good man yeah. and sort of come right through. Uh, he's a fullback um, by trade, but mm. he's been playing in the halves. He played on the weekend when we had in-house trial against the 21s. Uh, but a wonderful kids coach, um, great attitude. He's in the clubhouse and, um, you know, he's got aspirations. Um, and, you know, he... You know, when I ask him about Wade and how he measures up against his brother, he's got a he's got a bit to say. Uh, but that's what you do with sibling rivalry, mm. don't you, man? Yeah, he's a good kid. I've heard it's pretty competitive on the golf course between the two of them as well. So apparently, Wade's one of the best golfers in the team. Yeah, apparently the little bro goes even better. Really? So yeah, keep an eye out on that. Um, another guy I wanted to touch on, Kirk Capewell. It just seemed like he'd been in our team for like four or five years. At the end of it, like he looks so at home. His effort areas are incredible every kick chase he's always up there leading the charge straight away I guess we got a glimpse at, at what we brought him here for love it bro you mentioned it you know you know what to expect um, effort areas you know kick chase um, uh, kick pressure mm. um, line speed 
uh, the extra effort in defence. And I think when he went and went on that run, when he refused to be tackled, he twisted out and he kept driving his legs and he pushed through uh, the chase through into the end goal um, mm. on the ball a few times. He is a big human as well. Mm. Uh, he runs some courageous lines. Um, he's got a real presence around the place, and that's what I love this year in terms of having multiple uh, leaders uh, who just pick their time to say what they want to say. Sometimes they don't say it. They just they lead by actions, but it really is spread across, although there's no official leadership group within the site. Um, he's just, he, he's been good, man. Uh, watched him play yesterday, and already he's a bit of a fan favourite. Yeah. I mean, if that's what you got to look forward to in this Warriors jumper, man, like he's... The ultimate professional man and uh you know there was a really good handy right hand second row mm. last year uh, who played out on the edge um but geez we've just got another one now so the depth just gets bigger man yeah i think he even dropped it on the boot for a repeat seat as well so what can he do, yeah man? what can he do you mentioned that handy right edge player last year and we got a bit of a glimpse because i think last year our bench unit was so crucial to us getting these wins like jazz walks the bash brothers the energy they bring but perhaps we got a little signal of marata's role this year off the pine just a big body running through the middle runs great holes you look pretty unreal in that 15 jersey it looks scary man and I went and spoke to him after the game. I said, bro, scary, intimidating, and he loved it. Mm. And that's what we want from the modern-day enforcer. He was sort of played that role last year for Webby. He uh, ran some courageous lines, and he made sure that he went to some defenders or some key players in the opposition to let them know that he was there to tie them out, to even hurt them uh, um, legally uh, mm. with the ball in hand. Uh we spoke about leg speed with the board brothers and what they can do, but they're smaller bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, but this guy's a big body, an ex center with leg speed, mm. but a huge frame. You know, he's 110 kilos plus. Uh, he's probably lost a little bit now. He's got abs. So I think it was the summer <laughs> festival body <laughs> oh. that Marata had. <laughs> hey. uh, but bro, like a handful. Uh, you know, when you just had Adam come on, who's hard mm. to handle. You got Mitch Barnett. So even then, the tempo changes. The late feet, the Mitch is nice and hard, and then the leg speed of him coming through is just unreal man. Well we could probably go on for hours about the weekend. I did want to quickly touch on that first week though because I think we got a glimpse into the unreal depth at the club this year like a New South Wales Cup side they're going to be a handful. They played before on the weekend and put plenty of points on but the big thing from that round one trial for me was how well the young boys went. Your Labans, your Lickers, those type of footballers. The future's bright right? It is bright, and I've I've seen those guys play, and it's really disheartening that we didn't see more of Zion Mayu. Mm. Uh, I went and spoke to him probably two weeks ago, sort of saying, "Mate, I've been impressed with the man you are now to the man you were a year ago." Mm-hmm. Uh, a year ago, he was struggling to keep pace of just training. Uh, this is a guy that in the under twenties, sort of uh, national competition, he was outstanding. Um, he was by far the best player, and then coming into grade, there was a lot of raps on him. Um, you know, training full time, it took a little bit longer to adjust to it. But in terms of his uh, work ethic, in terms of his engine getting better and understanding the game and being able to talk to uh, in great context of mm. uh, what he needs to and those around him, he's been unreal. But unfortunately, we're let down on the weekend. I think if we had seen him finish off that game uh, with the, with his brothers uh, down in Christchurch, uh, he'd be a real force. And then even again on the weekend, he mm. would have been good. But you think about depth and the guys coming through and we lose Adam in a year's time uh, and you know you just want those big bodies in the middle of the park he's not a real big man but he comes off the back fence man <laughs> Hydra Okasini mm. Yafetsa Palacina um, you know Sawai so Matangi mm. uh, those type of runs man that's for sure yeah, I'd be moving out of the way, that's for sure. Ooh, Turn me into a turnstile, right? absolutely. But like I said, that kind of wraps up the pre-season. So was, is there anything that's really oppressed you, whether it's on the training paddock or on the field, some kind of key takeaways? Like, do you get a vibe from the team that they're ready to go? Have you seen the intensity lift as compared to last year? Has there been any key kind of takeaways you've noticed? Well, I know that um, webby has been levelling up, man, mm. in, in terms of what is going away, how much he's actually watched and how he wants his team to improve. And, you know, they're, they're a year better for having been in the system, but that system is not as different to last year. Mm. Uh, there's small tweaks, uh, there's levels on that already. And what I've been impressed with is, um, you know, not in a bad way, but a lot of sessions that we've had and that I've been a part of listening to in terms of the meetings before they go out and train a lot of emphasis on being better having quality reps um, making sure that you turn up and bring your absolute best each and every time Um, you know because I think there's been a perfect mix there's not been a lot of pats on the back or just admiring Mm. what they do and there's been plenty that you can uh, admire and be happy about but they really are about, about getting better and just 
I think the mix with the young boys coming through, the leaders and Roger coming back, and then obviously what Cape Walk brought, because Cape Walk sort of came halfway uh, through the season. Yeah. Uh, so now we're starting to see the benefits. And to see him play like that when he hadn't had a full preseason, and the weekend just shows you the class he's got, man. But the mix is good, man. And, and you know, everyone jokes about, is this year the year? Mm. Um, man, I've, I've just got to say, I've been speaking to a lot of people who don't like those jokes and always you know, yeah, yeah. ask their people say that. Yeah. But, you know, you, the feeling is that this is the year mm. um, and if you can't quite get there or get there about it's an opportunity to miss that's how much we're seeing on the ground that's how much we like the squad that's how much uh, their training and the intensity and everything is just just on I was going to ask about year two we be and you kind of touched on it there but obviously last year one Dallium coach of the year it would be pretty easy to put the feet up we've had a good summer weather wise so could have knocked off headed to the beach and got a bit complacent but by all accounts it sounds like he wasn't happy at all and he, he wants the lads to go to another level I've seen success change for people especially at this place uh, whether it be players whether that be uh, coaching staff whether it be mm. myself whatever it is and it does it does change I've not seen a change in Webby at all in terms of the humility he brings his work ethic and what he wants to do for the side and most importantly above that all is the care that he has for the players and and, and that's why the, the players love him because the, the care that he has for them and it's just, just showing up strengths man and um, look he's just he's been on the shit man um, he's lifted his games uh, to, a, to multiple levels and you know when you look at Slade Griffin who's coming as well I didn't give him a rap last time mm. he's done a wonderful job uh, David Tangatawa uh, so the, the mix you know yeah Losing uh, Justin Morgan, but the right mix of Slade getting promoted and David Tungatatoa coming in, uh, and Richie in there as well as Stace, who's now the new mm. Kiwi captain. Uh, it, it's it's a great mix, man. It really is, and and I think uh, uh, the players are, are loving the energy they throw at them, mm. and also the people that they are in terms of the open door policy. Let's touch on Stacey because I was going to throw it in there a bit later on in the pod, yeah. but you've brought him up now. How cool is that to see? Obviously, gets to stay on as an assistant, which is great for the club, but then takes over as the head coach of the Kiwis through to the end of the next World yeah. Cup. He's the perfect man for the gig, right? Absolute legend. Uh, he's a, a, a player's coach hmm. uh, that you absolutely love, and you know some of the sentiment out there is towards uh, you know obviously wanted to go to the game. He's yeah. had nine hundred plus games. Hmm. And, uh, you know, in Bennett, but I will tell you one thing, there was a number of players that uh, Madge McGuire was chasing last year and a number of these players, and I'm not going to mention names, mm. have come out and said that if Stacey was the coach, yeah. they would find it hard to say no. I was going to ask you about so that because I've, I've heard I've, the same rumours. I'm so. still over there. Stacey can make players mm. come back and play for the jumper uh, that have been wanted to come and play for the jumper for a very long time, but for whatever reason mm. um, had decided uh, they, they probably couldn't. Um, Stacey will make players do things that um, they wouldn't normally do because of who he is, what he's been able to do and he's actually a very good coach as well and he just keeps getting better everything he sees underneath Webby and what Webby does and the way he is around the players um, it helps him as well so uh, I'm really looking forward to it it's not often Stacey puts up his hand he's put up his hand this time and, and I know he's going to do a good job I've had, I've had a number of talks with him up the Kiwis, eh? Exciting nice. times ahead. Well, I, I guess all focus now shifts towards March the 8th and that first game, Friday night footy against the Sharkies. Already, excitement levels for you, mate. You'll be ticking it off on the oh, calendar. Look at me like everyone else, and my excitement levels are there because my family loves it, because mm. my friends love it, because every one of our friends and even the office staff, like everyone in this organisation just lives and breathes the Warriors. Um, you know, you, you will see the emojis, the, the coloured hearts. Mm -hmm. Uh, the red, the blue, the green. Um, it feels like that is everywhere right now because there's so many people that have cared, and not just in the last couple of years, for for a number of years. But you know, it's um, even more exciting now when you've got a a club with a culture that you're very proud of, uh, and and that you want to see do do really well. And it's been driven by Robbo, it's been driven by Cam, mm -hmm. and of course Webby. So even being driven from within the organisation, so it's exciting times. 100% get your tickets now because they're not going to last long if there are many remaining. In terms of the team, like 1 to 17, it's going to be crazy, but even that extended bench is going to be stacked. Can you kind of see any positions that are still up for grabs, or do you think Webby now will have it pretty much locked in? I, I just think the 1 to 13 on the weekend mm. will probably be your starting lineup. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's hard for a lot of a lot of people out there because um, there's some incumbents last year that may not get the start. And I'm just saying this from my point. Yeah, of yeah, hundred percent. It may it may be different because mm. uh, things can happen within two weeks. Yeah. But I, I reckon that one to thirteen pretty much stays the same. The fight's going to be on the bench. Mm. Like I'm a big fan of the Board Brothers, especially yeah. out there in combo together. And Jazz will be the first to put up his hand and say he didn't have a good game. 
uh, for him. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple of areas early on, but I think he's the ultimate competitor, and I think he's really important in this side. Uh, that's him individually by himself before he combines with someone like um, Dylan Walker. You know? mm-hmm. Marata, I always thought start the year he'd be that guy on the bench because he could cover both uh, middle yeah. a, a, and the edge. Um, he could still do that, but we saw what a force he was in the middle, bro, and how scary he was. And uh, you know when you got Adam and Mitch leading and starting the tempo, and then you got Marata coming on. If you're a tired defender and you see this leg speed and a big guy coming at you, and he's got this little bit of a grin when he runs over you or <laughs> around you, and he's also defensively he loves to go looking and searching mm-hmm. for you. It's, it's pretty freaky. So I guess. The area of contention is going to be in and around um, who's at number 14. Mm-hmm. Beginning of the year, I thought it was going to be a Chanel Harris to Vita because he could play any position, yeah. ultimate competitor as well. He didn't play on the weekend because of his calf. Mm-hmm. Um, so, has he had enough game time to be in that position? Uh, Freddie Lussick's been amazing in that position. He was there last year, nine. How much is Wade going to play or, or need? Or, you know, with Wade's problems last year mm-hmm. with the head as well, uh, can you trust anyone else coming in and playing long minutes? Because yeah. Freddie's the fittest in the club. Yeah. You know? Four minutes uh, 20. Not bad, eh? Very, very impressive. And he works hard, man. Mm. He's been such a hard worker working on his game. Uh, So that's where, you know, in my opinion, Mm. uh, there may be a few changes in and around that. But, um, you know, two weeks. Uh, The great thing about this coaching staff is they give you a chance, an opportunity every session to stand up and put up your hand and and, and compete and, and show how good you are. So there's still a number of time throughout the next two weeks to say, look, I think I'll be that person that you should be putting in for uh, the first round. Too much talent at the club. It's a great problem to have, right? <laughs> right it is a lot of talent because there's a lot of guys I haven't spoken about, like in the top 30, mm. uh, set to two. Yeah, uh, outstanding. Crazy one, man. Uh, mm. Both of them have looked outstanding when they got the opportunity. That cup side is going to be stacked oh. this year. Absolutely stacked. Yeah. Um, and we saw them play on the weekend against the county's uh, development side. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, at times they had to score, try and then kick the ball back off um, so they could give some position their way. But, uh, you know, 17s, the, the 19s uh, both won in the weekend mm. uh, over there in Souths. Um, 21s played in our trial against the 19s that didn't travel. So it, it's looking pretty good at the moment, man, and it's good to be a Warriors fan and support a club that is, you know, really striving to, to be better at what they do mm. and to do it for, for the nation, man, because I know that's what Robert wants. Goosebumps type of stuff there from you, some of your best work. We will be taking on the Sharks as well, so we'll just quickly touch on them. But they're a team with plenty of attacking threats. I guess it's a good way to start, right? At home against the quality football side, you get a great gauge as to where you're at. Yeah, we haven't had a real gauge of what they're like uh, this year because there's been no Nico Hines. Yeah. Um, you know, they're a little bit different without him, but their back five is probably where their threat is and where it lies. You know, you've got Jesse Ramey and uh, Seal. Sifa, Talakai, mm. uh, you know, Ronaldo, uh, Wolitalo, and, you know, you've, and of course, uh, Sione Katoa, and the Kennedy at the back. So I think mm. that back five is pretty much going to be their starting five. And we know how good they are. We know what Ronaldo's like when he plays the Kiwis. Um, he yeah. was a fine form playing for the, the Kiwis in that jumper last mm-hmm. year when they beat Australia 30 0. Uh, he brings with him an energy and a passion, especially playing at home. So a lot of strike across that board. Nico Hines uh, thrown in the mix and big, big boppers in the middle, mm. man. Um, so it's, it's going to be a good clash. It's going to be an exciting one. And if you want to start well, you may as well have that, that, that tip sheet where you look up and there's a whole list of players where you go, damn, damn, mm. damn. And that's what it's going to be like when you face the Sharks round one right here at Gomedi Stadium. And while we're talking about the Sharks, of course, we won that Holberg Award with that historic comeback win from them. Just touch on that because it's cool to get like recognition at the national level for what was a pretty crazy game and what a comeback. Yeah, yeah, two things. That night was amazing, and it will live in uh, you know through the season this year. Mm. It will live in the memories of Warriors fans for a long time to come. Um, Clark's just still got memories of Sean Johnson captured by the content crew here. Just yeah. Not bad, lads. Not after, bad. Um, blowing yeah. up um, raw emotion that he absolutely loved against his old team mm. with that, that clutch play, uh, you know, w- w- which is unreal. But the fact that the fans got out there and they voted for this team that they love so much because it was a, a fan's choice and to be recognised amongst the Halbergs, which is truly athletics and traditional sports, yeah. mainstream media sports, although league is now, it's, it's huge, man. It's huge. And who knows, that may be the first bit of uh, silverware you pick up this year, but not the last day. Eh? 
playing the parade, boys, playing the parade. Uh, before we get on to the fan questions with Jack, I just wanted to quickly ask, because it's Vegas this weekend, putting your old school player's hat on, yeah. is that an opportunity you would have liked to have had back in the day? And ha- just how big could this be for the game, like if we can grow the sport globally? Well, it's huge, man. You talk about growing the sport globally, well, Andy's in that already talking about uh, potential uh, NRL competition over there <laughs> in America, you know? So maybe I'll put out my hand. Yeah, there we go. Mate, you're, you're still fit enough. You can there. play. No way. No. I just coach, talk from afar. But, yeah. You know, like, there's a lot of people that can go out there and do that. Mm. And, like, I've always said that the product of rugby league is one of the best products in the world. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and to see that up close and personal uh, is when you really appreciate the athleticism, the brutality, um, uh, and just the strategy involved in, in trying to win a game. There's no better feeling than being in the middle of the field and you're grinding down a team, taking the punishment and then just getting over the top of them. So um, it's awesome. I'm really excited about it. You know, we want this game to truly be global one day because we feel it's worthy of it. So um, that's, that's a huge start. And I'm hearing... I'm hearing that the Warriors name is getting thrown up there next year and I'm, I'm thinking if that does happen, uh, you and I... Oh, I like it already. You've included me. Yep. Yeah, be insane. Yeah. You know, and we, we, we can get this done. Supporting the wires up the wires in Vegas. Well, they've got to have the reigning champs there, so it would only make sense, right? Oh, hey, brother, you're talking. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Right, we'll bring Jack up, and he's got some fan questions for you, mate. I loved all of that. I love especially the idea of Monty, captain coach of the new New York team. Over yeah, there. I think that'd be good. Um, yeah. Well, listen, uh, because I'm the great producer that I am, I failed to put out the fan question call. So these are producer questions. Nice. I promise to the uh, one take faithful that I will get the questions up. But Mons, um, you spoke a lot about Ali Leato this year. So Benny, I kind of wanted to ask you, bro. You, we saw in both in both trials, yeah, um, pretty strong showing, particularly in Christchurch. But in both trials, what did you make of Ali's preseason after what kind of Monty tipped us up on, I guess, four or five weeks ago? Yeah, he's he's an exciting player, isn't he? Like every time he gets his hands on the ball, something's going to happen. He has the ability to beat multiple defenders with his feet or his power. His aggression on D is exciting as well. And he just looks always so excited to be out there. Like he's not afraid to bring a bit of hype and give it the big ones. And I think that last try he scored on the weekend, Roger, the nice little goose, he feeds Ali. Like if you can get those two on the same side at some stage of the season, that is scary. So yeah, the future's bright for him and Monty gave him big raps. There's nothing better than when you hype someone up in the preseason and then they deliver. So well played yeah, to you, I'm mate. Just a fan, man. Yeah. <laughs> watching and admiring from afar. Well done. Uh Mons Lukey Met, I mean, not to read too much into trials, looks like throughout the preseason that he's he's staked his claim for that sixth jumper that was very competitive. Um we spoke about in the season preview, you spoke about Tamari and Chanel and Lukey kind of all having a bit of a three-way battle for that. Um, without getting ahead of ourselves, what have you made of Lukey's preseason and I guess his first showing in that sixth jumper because it seems like he's a lot more comfortable playing with Sean right now, even though it is trials, than, um, than I guess what we saw at the back end of last year. Yeah, I, I think Lukey um, got more time than anyone uh, for a number of reasons, probably because he's been showing that much at training mm-hmm. um, at the back end of last year. Uh, before he got injured he, he was playing really good but I think at the back end of last year and last year he was probably trying too hard um, mm. he was trying to run too much because we knew he had God given talent in terms of his speed and he was uh, really by doing that he wasn't really putting those people outside him or inside him in better positions but this year that's really changed mm. down in Christchurch um, he was playing more of the um, the alpha role in the halves and, and designing and, and putting people in, in positions uh, but defensively so there's yeah. two reasons it was like he tried to run too much and he was thinking about himself but um, with that amazing pace but two things defensively sound man uh, he made some big hits on the mm. weekend um, one on one some yeah. courageous tackles and also some of his reads and numbering and then being better for those people in and around him and understanding a little bit more and being oh, I'd say a little bit of a leader in, in defence um, we haven't seen him open up yet I think nah. uh, in Christchurch if he got that ball off really last mm. he was gone <laughs> uh, but with the shape they've got now and with so much threat across the park uh, and with us playing through teams, I think him Lou being coming in the mm-hmm. back door it will just open up so much for him in his pace. So, uh, you know, I think it'd be fair to say that he probably is going to get the start uh, in most people's eyes. But of course, there's two weeks to go. Uh, but geez, when you've got him and Tamari in the wings and even Chanel Harris Tavita, uh, it's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Not bad, yeah. Defensively, I think he got under Big Valence Tefari at one point and even got him into touch. So, yeah, yeah. it was, um, he had himself a game, Lukey. Uh, two more from me, Mons, then I'll get you out of here. You, you did, we did speak about Kurt Capewell off the top. Very strong in his debut in the colours. I just, I guess, if you could elaborate, mate, um, through your eyes, where you see him slotting in, do you see him as a permanent fixture on that right side? 
um, middle swinging off the bench like where do you see Kurt playing in an ideal world just your opinion kind of in your eyes yeah I I think what Kurt did for us on the weekend playing 80 minutes is and playing on the right edge I think mm. I think that's it for us mm. um, but he's he's that guy that is effort on effort he does all the um, the the two percenters right mm-hmm. um, he goes after the game he knows how to change momentum of games as well and when to force the issue uh, and he's a he's a big body uh, so I think for us um, he's going to make that a right side his home especially with the way the mud after has been playing through the middle yeah. um, but Luke's one of those guys who could play anywhere um, at a pinch if there's injuries he'll probably go out to a centre role you can go in the middle and, and, and dig hard and deep for a little while as well and, and we've just shown his ability with his, his kicking as well so He's a guy that can do it all, but I think for us, uh, and on that right side, um, especially outside uh, Shawnee, and then uh, with his defensive qualities as well, uh, I think that's going to be his position where he makes it his home, man. Awesome. All right, boys, we may as well wrap it up there. Appreciate your time, and um, I'll make sure that we have fan questions next week, Benny. Happy days. All good. Cheers, Mons, mate. Uh,